recording. Uh, Lorna, Lorna Edwards, welcome to New Wellington, New Zealand from Cardiff. You are connecting with us on Zoom tonight. You first met Secular Dharma through Secular Mindfulness, both as a student and as, as a teacher of mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. And as such, you became curious, you told me. So during 2015, you found yourself searching for Secular Dharma teachings and heard about the launch of Bodhi College. During 2016, 2017, you took part in the two-year Bodhi College course called Secular Dharma Study Practice and Community. So Lorna is a core member of the Cardiff Secular Dharma Group, which will be formally launched later this month in January. You said that the purpose of the group is, quote, you, you, a wish to take forward the teachings. And your group intends to go through Stephen Batchelor's After Buddhism and Winston Higgins' After Buddhism workbook together which I think is, we're looking forward to hearing how that goes. And you're also in the process of setting up a secular meditation group in the village in which you live, which is 18 kilometers to the north of Cardiff. And mm -hmm. your work as a systemic and family psychotherapist is you are deeply influenced by secular Dharma study and practice. So Lorna, welcome to Wellington. And um, we, have a, we have a small gathering today because it's the middle of our summer. And a lot of people are away, but we're very keen to hear what you have to say about your groups and what you've been learning. So thank you. Over to you. Okay. Thank you, Ramsey. And um, it's really good to be with you all. Maybe I'll just say about connecting with, with one mindful breath, because um, that's why I'm, but that's why today is today. Um, during my time at Bodhi College, um, I did a lot of internet exploring and that's how I found One Mindful Breath in Wellington and I remember being really interested and impressed and being able to read uh, blogs, what we call them. Um, so that's really how I found you if you like and then I think connected later on um, when it was the the Kickstarter project for visual after Buddhism workbook, and then um, connected with Ramsey, and hence today, today is on. So it's yeah, it, it's a, it's quite to be in Wellington in the summer, um, and also partially to be in Cardiff in the winter is a kind of interesting. <laughs> it's different, so. Yes, so just maybe a bit of background. Um, I found Buddhism, or I found Buddhism in 1994 when I was living in Zimbabwe, and the Tibetan Lama I came to Zimbabwe, and my psychotherapist um, said she thought it'd be really helpful if I came to um, hear this Lama. So I went to hear this Lama, knowing nothing about Buddhism, but I heard I was aware it existed. But so um, I went and was very touched by what Islam has said and then became involved in Tibetan Buddhism. And that went on for quite a lot of years. And um, over time, aspects of it, yeah, and I, I really very much appreciate it as an introduction and keeping me um, within, if you like, Buddhist teachings. And then aspects of, of them just didn't resonate anymore, like aspects like the during the metaphysical aspect. So then we moved back to Wales, where, where I'm from, and um, became aware of John Cabot Zinn's work in the mid mid nineties. Um, uh, just quite a good read of the book, The Full Catastrophe and Mindfulness Based Stress Reduction, um, and became involved uh, as a student and then later as a teacher and now uh, as a student and a teacher. Um, and, this, and then, yes, as Ramsey has said, in about 2015, and I guess there's a period leading up to that, to that as well, where I didn't feel. I, I just felt there was, there was more, and um, so I started my search, and um, yeah, I found teachers and 
um, programs and then a friend uh, and I'd read Stephen's Buddhism Without the Noose a long time ago and I thought it was interesting but it, I didn't really take much notice and um, then a friend told me that Brody College was being set up and said oh you must you know you must you must join it and so I had a look and I thought it was very expensive um, I thought, oh, I can't afford this, and lots of, I, I was really putting obstacles um, in my way, and, and um, I was very grateful because uh, a wise part of me spoke and said, um, it would be really important to, to do this, maybe one of the most important things of your life, and I listened to that wise part, and I signed up, and um, I was really grateful. Um, I really enjoyed the course and got a lot out of it. Um, I think. And then, so, so now I think it's really that, that, that afterwards, it's what, what happens now. And as Ramsey said, um, two things. One, the, the secular Dharma group in Cardiff, which officially starts um, next week with this is our again a visual uh, we're working from the workbook and um, and Stephen's this is our source book which is the source book for for our secular dharma course. Um, so Ramsey should I stop now and hear a bit about your people's experiences of, of your secular dharma group and then what do you think? I, th I think perhaps now we could uh, just start by asking some questions about what you're doing. So mm -hmm. I'll just invite anybody who just wants to know a bit more. So it's the early stages for your community, but you had a journey to get there, which is, sounds interesting. So mm -hmm. I invite anybody to go up and just ask any questions. I mean, it's a lot to get on with, but what do you, anybody have anything they want to ask? I just think what you said there, the journey, I'd be very interested in hearing how, how it all started. The journey to, to the setting up of the secular Dharma group. Mm. Is that what you said? Yeah. Well, we, we had a um, mindfulness, we had a mindfulness teaching group in Cardiff, which started in 2016. So those of us who were teaching mindfulness got together and um, Three of the four people that are setting up the secular Dharma group were core members of that mindfulness teachers group. The mindfulness teachers group went on, it was a, also, if you like, a study practice and community group. And it went on until about two years ago. And then it just somehow just fell apart. Um, so three of the people are from. Go, we go back as far as 2006, which is, you know, two, like, two, sorry, 2010, which is still quite a long time ago. Um, and then the fourth person joined the Mindfulness Teacher Group maybe about three years ago. So we thought we'd start and settle the group, and then we would, then we will invite other people. To, to join the group. At the moment, we can work in each other's meets, in each other's houses, and um, as time goes on, we'll, we'll look for a venue, a, a public venue, if you like, and, uh, and hope that the group will, will grow. I, I have a question for you. Well, a couple of questions are really related, which is, um, why are you setting up a secular Dharma group in Cardiff, but a secular meditation group closer to home in, in your village? And associated with that is, why isn't secular mindfulness practice enough in your experience? Why did you want to go deeper than just mindfulness practice? Okay. Um, yes, that's a, I think that's, um, that's a really interesting question. And I think it's something that's been 
talks a lot about in the mindfulness and dharma communities. And I, I, when I was reading, I, I, when I was reading this recently, um, I, Winston had written something about um, the eightfold path as as a feedback loop, and I drew it as a feedback loop, which I've never. To be honest, I, I think I've. I mean, I know it's not linear, the actual path, but I think I've had a linear visual in my mind. And so when I was reading the book, I tend to dip into things that when we have our group proper, I would be um, today from beginning to end. But this, this idea of a feedback loop, so I drew it as a feedback loop, and then I wrote the, the eight aspects of the path. And of course, mindfulness is the, the seventh aspect. And I thought, well, it's no wonder that we are, that secular mindfulness isn't enough because it's part of, it's part of this eight. Um, so this feedback loop, I, the, I don't think you can, it will be minute. Uh, oh, maybe, can you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that, so, so I think that, so that visual, I think, uh, really answers the question that there are because there is all of this as well, and some um, secular mindfulness teachers would say, and I think John Cabot Zinn would say that the the other aspect of the, the path are implicit in the teachings. And I think when John Cabot's in um, in 1990, when he started this work, it, it was a very different entry point for him, but it probably wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been okay that the mindfulness movement so called could not have happened if he, as the introducer of it, had been explicit about the Dharma. And to come to the other end, um, last week I went to a mindfulness based cognitive therapy um, for life training at the Oxford Mindfulness Centre. And um, this is mindfulness based cognitive therapy for the general population. And I was wonderfully shocked by how much of the Dharma is, is in that training. So I think, you know, my, the secular mindfulness um, movement is evolving and it, I, I think again, a lovely feedback loop of layers and, and now much more of the Dharma. Um, yeah, it's not, I don't think there are, I don't think there are Pali words or anything like that in, in, in in the course book, but it, but it is very, it's very obviously the, the, the Dharma and a lot of emphasis on appreciation, um, uh, befriending practice, which is a, um, an aspect of, um, not an aspect, a, um, and it comes from meta practice and it, it yeah, so it's a different, it's a different way of, of practicing meta. Um, there's a graph ten from the gratitude practice which comes from kind of peace in the frantic world which is inviting participants to to just bring to mind ten aspects of their lives um, during a day of advice practice, suggested practice at the end of the day. Um, yeah, so that I found that really um, heartening and look forward to really learning learning that teaching and then being able to offer it to groups. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else got any comments, observations, questions, thoughts on your own practice that you'd like to share with Lorna, your own experience? I 
Hi, Alona. Uh, my name's Alex. Um, I was just wondering. Hi, Alex. Hello. Um, I was just wondering how it is that you're going through to get interests for the secular uh, hmm. Buddhist group. Like, how are you advertising that? Like, is there or are you advertising it at all, or are you just sort of relying yeah. on existing networks? Okay. Uh, thank you, Alex. Um, yes, at the moment we're not advertising it, and that's a so at this moment it isn't a public group. Um, we thought we needed to get together and start it off, and then I'm I'm also interested. So I'm going to ask you a question, please, for afterwards in terms how yours became a public group because I'm as I, I I think yours is a public group and that's obviously what we and yours is advertise you advertise yours and um I think I yes I've seen your I oh that reminds me something really important I forgot to say at the beginning. But when I looked at the list that Ramsey this is interim when I looked at the list that Ramsey sent me of, of the speakers to your group that they're, you know, they're, they're Dharma teachers, and I just wanted to say I'm a Dharma student and practitioner, I'm not a Dharma teacher, so I just, uh, thank you for reminding me to say that. But yes, so it's not a, our group isn't a public group as yet, but we're going to get going and then find the best way, so to maybe first to invite some people that we know who might be interested so we can get a larger core interested group and then to go public, as it were, and we, yeah, I think we was a um, psychotherapy counselling group that's on online that I think probably would accept a, a notice for for such a group. Um, yeah, but I'm interested in how yours became. A public group and did it start off as a, a small group or did it start from the beginning as a, a, a core group etc. Okay. I think I can best answer that but let me start Lorna by saying that not everybody who, te who talks to us on a third Wednesday is a teacher. Quite a few okay. people are just members of their Dharma group or facilitators or something mm -hmm. or uh, you may have heard of some of them but I'm sure others that they are. Mm -hmm. So we started off Oh gosh, uh, 2000 and oh, I don't remember when it was. I honestly don't remember. But m m my wife said to me what, one year, I, I, she said, look, you're not teaching meditation at the moment, but you really need to teach me how to meditate because my work's going like crazy, driving me nuts. And mm -hmm. I'm going to invite my girlfriends around into our living room and you're going to teach us all to meditate. And that's going to be my excuse to learn to meditate. So my wife's name is Despina. She invited her, all her Greek girlfriends, Maria, Eleutheria, Nectaria, uh, Eleni, and we all just sat around and meditated. And I invited my friend Peter. Yeah. And then from there, other people kind of started getting, getting invited and our living room became too small. So we yeah. then um, rented a room off what was called the Plunkett Society, which is an organisation for looking after new mothers and babies in New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, and it just kind of... There was no plan, and uh, we were originally called Simply Meditation. Um, mm. The simple reason that my, uh, my wife's friends would not have appreciated coming along to a Buddhist group. They were all from the Orthodox community, by which means that means that they're part of the Greek community here in Wellington. Mm. And they may not believe it, but they all go along for what I call hatches, matches, and dispatches. So the church mm -hmm. is full when there's a christening, uh, a wedding, or a funeral. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and um, subsequent to that, so it's kind of just grown organically. But yes, mm. we do have a website, onemyhoorg.nz. Um, it started off at simplymeditation.org.nz and then it kind of changed. We have a meetup group. Meetup.com is a New York-based American online, well, it's a, a way for people to meet face-to-face. And we have 850 people in our meetup group, of whom we've probably met 40. Now I know there's at least one, one came from meetup. So here at the moment, so we, we, we do get occasionally people coming to us through meetup. Mm. Uh, but you know, numbers, numbers can be deceptive. And that number is a very deceptive number. We, you know, we haven't met most of those people. And, and, and that, that blend that you're talking about between um, implicit and explicit 
Um, yes, the meetup group is a impl implicitly a Dharma group, but it's really just a meditation, simply meditation. Mm -hmm. What it's yeah. meetup group's called. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think the, the main way that, that really got people cohesive was in a monthly newsletter, which mm -hmm. from, this year has gone quickly, unless somebody decides to take that on monthly again. We've mm -hmm. now started a WhatsApp group. Okay. So, um, so you know, we've got various ways of just communicating with each other. And uh, what have I forgotten? I'm sure someone else could, could add something to that. I think you've got most of it aside from maybe I'm just thinking of things like the YouTube channel and things like that. And I don't think that necessarily gets any people to come along, but you know, it's all about, you know, even though there's only, there's not the numbers which we normally have at our meeting today, people are able to come and watch this, um, this presentation via, via YouTube as well. So, yeah. And it seems that I didn't. I'm not quite hearing you. Sorry. Yeah. Alex, sorry. It also seems that having a once a month session that we call Beginner's Mind, despite the fact that every session could be called Beginner's Mind, <laughs> um, uh, seems to attract a lot of people on those nights. Yeah. And we'll, we'll often get two or three people we've never seen before on a night like that. Just mm. they think, oh, this is when I show up to learn meditation. Um. Mm. Okay. So, so it's monthly that you that you get together. I mean, week, weekly. Weekly, yes. Weekly, okay. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah, yeah. We've got one, two, three. There's six of us here tonight. That's a low number. We generally get somewhere between five and fifteen, depending right. on the uh, and the part of the year. Now it is it is summer holiday. And a lot yeah. of work slows down for January. New Zealand kind of starts going in February. Okay. But, you know, I'm not, not surprised that we're slightly empty today. But, uh, yeah. 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 And do you, I mean, in terms of community, do you meet outside these groups? I mean, not necessarily all of you, but some of you, do you, do you feel supported do you feel you can contact each other if you want to if there's that sort of connection well there's, there's mentoring and things like that so yeah, yeah. Mm. um yeah. So say for example like ramsey might offer mentoring to individuals who want to help their meditation practice we've also do events and things like that like we might run a uh, a silent meditation retreat for the day yeah. and things like that so okay. we don't confine it strictly to the meetings mm. Mm. Right. Yeah. another way of answering your question is that there's been a number of attempts to get us to be more sociable but yeah. we're spread out over quite a wide geographical area Mm -hmm. uh, and also quite a wide age range. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. not easy to get people together in a group. The best thing we did mm -hmm. in that case was to rent a cinema and screen the, sh was it the, sh the shape, shape of water. We, f we filled this small cinema with 35 people. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we so that's a wonderful film. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah, I love that thing. Hmm. So can I ask just as a, as a side question as well, um, what was it about, because you were sort of, you were, you were practicing uh, mindfulness already, what was it that drew you to secular Buddhism? Like the more of the focus on the, the Buddhism rather than just on the mindfulness. What was it that prompted you to, to need something a little bit more? Yeah. Um, I really, I think it was probably thinking about ethics and thinking about how I live my life and thinking there was some gap, which there still is, between <laughs> 
between how I'd like to live my life and how I am living my life. So I think there was something about that that, that drew me to think, or not think, to know that I needed something else and that I needed the Dharma, although I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have called it that, even, I would have called it, you know, Buddhist teachings or something like that, or Buddhism, Buddhism I probably would have called it. And so I think it was really that, that I, I wanted more guidance, how to live my life. Um, yeah, and I, and I think Stephen, I think for me, Stephen is unique in how he translates, and I'm using, because he is a translator, but I'm using it in how he translates the Dharma, um, not literally translates, but translates, and I think he, he, puts it in a way that really makes sense to me and I feel I can understand and I feel that there is a way so that I feel now I have the tools whether how much gap discrepancy there is between how I live my life and how I want to live my life is I mean that's an ongoing moment moment decision choice but I feel I have now I feel I have a map thanks to sexual dharma so I think it was, it was, it's been a big shift for me um, from, from secular mind to me. Yeah. Does that answer your question? It does, thank you. Okay. Can I ask you a quick, make, make a suggestion, I'll see how this resonates with you, but um, Stephen has expressed the four noble truths as four tasks to be accomplished. Yeah. So would you, to me, it seems to me that the first three tasks of mindfulness practice as commercially taught, sold in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, experience life, that's what's happening. We shut our eyes, we're not shutting ourselves away from life, we're experiencing it, we're experiencing life. Mm -hmm. We're trying to let go of our instinctive reactivity, the greed, mm -hmm. delusion as expressed, traditional. And we want to stop and experience a few moments of peace, calm, freedom, joy that come up. That's mindfulness as it's taught. It's the fourth task, which is act, to mm. express in the Eightfold Path that makes it into the Dharma for me. What do you think of that as a proposition? Yeah, I think, I think that's, I think that's really, yep, I, I like that and, I think that secular mindfulness, yes, in terms of, so Stephen's acronym, ELSA, Embrace Life, um, I, with aspects of how mindfulness is marketed, sometimes I think it's marketed, no, not sometimes, it is often marketed, it can relieve stress, it can help you relax, it can help you sleep, it can, and I'm not sure that, Embrace life or embrace Dukkha is actually is is in secular mindfulness programs as much as it is in the way that the Buddha and and Stephen Mel um, take off against those tasks and let go of the activity of that. Um, again, I think the mindfulness space for this is therapy for life. The, the new program I recently. Um, in, um, the activity is named, um, whereas in, in previous uh, mindfulness, section mindfulness program, it's not named as such, it's named, and there's the vicious flower practice of the, the first arrow being the core of the, the core, the hub of the flower, that's not quite the right word, but you know what I mean, and then the second arrows are the petals. Of the, of the flower and I think that is a really you know that's a quite um, amazing I think so they you know there's a in groups when this is being worked with 
you know, there's a, there's a white board or a something board and the, the head of the flower is drawn and then people are asked to name the, name the petal. And then there's also a virtuous flower so that the, the first arrow is the seed and then, so then out um, embracing Dukkha, acknowledging, recognizing this, and then um, seeing that or that potential reactivity, letting go of it, seeing the seeking of it, and then acting. So one of the aspects of the of the um, this the wonderful feedback loop. Um, yeah. So. So yes, Ramsey, I think it, I agree with you, and I don't think, and I don't think that the first three are as clear, or they they haven't been as clear to me in respect to the mindfulness practice as as Stephen's giving us the the full task. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you. I unless has anybody got any. Observations, they want to have final questions or hints or tips for, for not about the tea and biscuits, the importance of tea and biscuits or something? One of the things that changed uh, during the course of this group was the, um, the addition of tea and biscuits at the end of the evening. Ah, oh, right. Okay, uh, I will make a note. Okay. And that's the time for talking together. Exactly. That's, that's, the, that's the time for the creating connection between people. So rather right. than sitting in a room, being quiet, opening your eyes, listening to a talk, then going home, we actually talk to each other. And interesting, right. I, in October when I went to Sydney for the launch of After Buddhism, a workbook, um, one thing I noticed there is that they, the, the insight meditation groups in Sydney, the secular groups, have their tea and biscuits in the middle of the evening, not at the end of the evening. Right. So first, then they have tea and biscuits, then they have the talk. So, no. so that, that's uh, an, an, an interesting, um, I'm, I'm still pondering that and the usefulness of it. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> I was just thinking about which, where to have it, but that sounds a very, we have, at the moment in our group, we have food. So we bring, we bring food and we have something to eat and then we sit and then we, um, well, I mean, this is what we've done in our, in our mindfulness group that I think we'll keep to this format. I and mean, for now, as we settle and start this group, but later on, you know, when it becomes a public group, group and, we need to find a venue, then we'll remember to invest it. Thank you. But yeah, it's really important. Lorna, can you say something about the group you want to start in your village? Oh, yes, yes. Right, the village. I live in an ex mining village in the, in the South Wales Valleys, and it's very beautiful, post industrial beauty, um, and nature having come back as nature does. Um, so I, I've tried to, I've offered an um, eight-week course about three times and had four takers for one course um, and they were people from the valleys but not from the village and that course went really well and I talked with um, Martine who's my tutor and she had said, well, perhaps, you know, that it's just that mindfulness isn't just known much about or signing up for a course is just too not whatever, culturally. Anyway, whatever the reason, it's not happening. So it was Martin's idea to maybe um, set up a, a sitting group. So I'm going to... I talked about this with, with Ramsey and had some very helpful ideas and resources so thank you very much for that and I am going to go ahead with um, offering a monthly sitting group to start with I'm going to start in February and um, see what the 
see what the interest is and then maybe take up Ramsey your idea of the course that you offer which I have four resources thanks to you um, and also to think about offering an eight week course in the village later on if, if, the, if there is interest but I'm, I'm, I'd like to keep that mindfulness drop in group I start that in trouble and just keep it going so just that it's you know it happens once a month and just hope over over months years um that yeah that it will grow so to to offer something because i think people this is probably an area where there isn't opportunity that people in you know our lives are pretty crazy busy and, and i think that a lot of people probably wouldn't know about meditation you know just because it hasn't come into their orbit so that's that's the plan for the village. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think we it's half an hour now. Yeah. We're going to get ready to go to work, I believe. Yes, and also Zoom. If if we stay much longer, we're all turning to pumpkins because Zoom will make us into pumpkins after forty minutes, I believe. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. Except we we actually pay for it, so we can have as long as we like. Okay. Anyway, but and thank you. You know, I really, I really appreciate this invitation. It's given me lots to think about in the run up, and uh, yeah, it's been an interesting experience. And you know, really, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your experience, and uh, we wish you luck with your drop-in mindfulness group in the village and with a secular dharma group um, in Cardiff. And uh, yeah. we look forward to seeing you perhaps in a, in a year from now. And you can tell yeah. us what's happened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Have good tea and biscuits, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Lorna. <laughs> thank you all. Thanks, um, Grace. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.